We're at the Ash meeting on hematologic malignancies. We are in Chicago, and I'm with one of the program co-chairs of this meeting, and this is uh, Joseph M. Connors, MD, who is clinical director of the Center for Lymphoid Cancer at the British Columbia Cancer Agency in Vancouver. First off, congratulations. This is the debut for this meeting, and it's been a, a fun couple of days here in Chicago. What are the highlights? First off, what were you looking for when you put this whole program together? Well, ASH puts on a number of different educational activities through the year, including its annual meeting, which 20 plus thousand people attend. And we became conscious of the fact that it's difficult for uh, busy practicing clinicians to get a, uh, an overview of the management of hematologic malignancies in a reasonably tight package that made it efficient for them to hear what experts in the field think ought to be the current standard of care. So we thought we'd take a shot at actually putting on just such a meeting and hoped that it would appeal to busy clinicians who uh, may or may not be at academic centers but see a range of hematologic malignancies and want to refresh themselves on what the state of the art is right now. You had a series on like how to treat uh, on the first day. How did that go and, and what was the concept behind it? Well, in general, each of the speakers was asked to approach the, their talk uh, along those lines. Uh, think through how would you actually treat the commonly presenting patient with the conditions that we've named off for you. And so it provides a sort of a point of orientation for these speakers. Many of the speakers are used to reviewing a subject and saying, here's all the evidence and here are all the possibilities that you might... But we wanted them to sift through that and say, given the body of information that we have, sometimes right. solid evidence, sometimes uh, less so, what ought a clinician who thinks he wants to practice or she wants to practice at the current state of the art, what should they be doing in their practice? And then what are the variations that are necessary to accommodate patient-specific factors, age, comorbid conditions, the, the things that qualify whether or not you can actually deliver what's otherwise considered optimal therapy. Uh, a sifting through of the evidence to arrive at a fairly firm set of recommendations. This is really an offshoot of a series from blood, correct? Yes. Uh, on purpose, blood has uh, had a series of publications entitled How I Treat, in which the experts in the particular field are asked to state, as I was saying, what is all the evidence, but when you sift through it, what ought you to be doing? And that's been going on. It actually turns out to be one of the most popular uh, and uh, most often queried publication units within the publication of blood. Nice. And so it obviously has a high level of appeal to those reading blood, and we thought we'd match that up with presentations that are addressing it in the same format. Any other highlights of the premier meeting here that you got uh, you were really happy about? Yeah, I am. Uh, we, we on purpose told the speakers that we expected them to be here for the entire meeting to be visible, to mix with the crowd. Uh, we, on purpose, at each of the lunches, have set aside a table with a sign on it saying, here's the expert, why don't you sit and have lunch with them? Nice. Uh, we wanted people to have the opportunity, in addition to hearing the speakers on the podium and seeing the panel discussions, actually sit down with them and clarify points that they think were unclear or mention specific patients they're managing and use that as a teaching point to uh, delve into a specific issue with regard to a particular uh, condition. And that seems also to have been quite successful. A nice spin-off of that is that it's meant that the speakers uh, are that much more aware of why people are here, what, what, what did they come looking for. And that, uh, I think, is very helpful feedback for speakers who sometimes wonder, what's that person in the audience doing out there? Uh, why'd they come to this meeting? And now, exactly. I, now I have a better sense of that. And you also have some posters, you have some original presentations, so there are new things to learn here too. Right. We did want also to attract uh, younger physicians, uh, maybe having recently entered practice or recently entered academic positions, who wanted to provide them with an opportunity to present uh, their work in progress. And we have coupled that with the annual meeting. And so, ordinarily, there's a rule against double submission. Uh, we, for the annual meeting, we require per, uh, abstract submitters not to have previously presented that same data. But in this case, we did exactly the opposite. 
and we said we actually invited people to spend to send their material here for abstract presentation with the permission and encouragement to also submit it to the annual meeting. Now there's no guarantee it'll be accepted for the right. annual meeting, but um, we're actually impressed with the quality of the uh, material that has been presented. And to further encourage the submission of those abstracts, six of them were chosen out of those that were submitted for formal platform presentation. Uh, again, we thought this was a nice way to provide younger investigators a chance to see what it's like to stand up there and present your data. And uh, we thought it would be a nice recognition of the time and effort that they put into these uh, abstracts. So you're putting number two together? Yes, we are. We've already uh, identified an organizing committee. I think uh, Dr. Anderson, Dr. Talman, and I know my, I'm uh, committed to coordinating it again next year. We've already reached out to uh, some of the speakers from this year and some other experts in individual fields. We've broadened the coordinating committee and we're already started on the process of putting it together. We are very much looking for lessons from this meeting. What, it, what went well, what worked, uh, what do we need to do differently next time? Uh, for instance, we need to have a coffee table <laughs> closer to where the speakers are speaking and the audience is sitting. And we've yeah. heard that feedback a couple of times. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there are little things you can always tweak an yeah. activity like this based on the, the feedback that you've received. And we're keeping our ears wide open. We certainly hope we get a lot of comments back when people evaluate the course. And uh, with a meeting like this where we have so much control over format and content, uh, we really do think we can fine tune this even to an even better product, uh, starting from a base of what we think has been quite successful. Well, I congratulate you and also I'll tell you that the investigators that we have talked to, they have been very generous with their time, very outgoing, and we've had some great conversations here. So thank you very much for that. We made some good choices. Absolutely, I think so. And for Ash Political News, please look around for other interviews that we've done here. And of course, in print, I'm Rick McGuire.